how they do here into picks and bands and wicked's return is echoed by an Aurelia band right away. The Draven as well. And this is the thing. Copenhagen Wolves have drawn so many bands on Freeze and Soren in particular. The most banned champions against the Wolves. Cassiopeia, Callista, yeah. Cassidy, Draven. So many targeted at those carries. So the question is now here for Elements. Do they want to leave Rek'Sai open? Challenge Copenhagen Wolves to first pick that one and then take a Callista for Reckless himself? Otherwise, the Draven ban doesn't really make a whole lot of sense unless you take away that second AD carry Freeze loves to play. And with Jarvan banned as well, which is the most played, like seven times four for, Air for Airwax with Jarvan, one on every other jungler, even though it's been nerfed on this patch, it will still be his go-to champion, I believe. So that's why they banned it. So they get that first pick, Rek'Sai. Are they going to take Kalista to explain that Draven ban against Mr. That Freeze? That would be the question. You see... The first pick, Rek'Sai, though, that is taken as they ban the Arya, the Lissandra out as well. Really quick pick and ban phase, actually, from both teams. And this is surprising from Element's side because they usually take their time. I'm wondering how much this has to do with some of the changes they made. Obviously, Krepo coming in as next week here. Uh, we have Nif now joining the of coaching course. role. I mean, this yes. is his maiden voyage. Let's see how this one works out for them. But they've already filled out their bot lane. It's a Corky and, of course, a Morgana. Of course, that could be a couple other places. A little early to judge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Morgana, flex pick for sure, can be every single lane, honestly. So th they're taking Corky. I really feel like they want Copenhagen Wolves then to pick Kalista. Otherwise, why do you ban that Draven? Why are you afraid of Draven so much compared to Kalista? Despite her receiving a small change here in 5.4, she's still a strong mm -hmm. pick. But if they want him to play Kalista, what can happen then is Corky, because he gets that Trinity Force earlier than Kalista completes two items, which he really needs to be super effective. That allows you to have a lot of control over the bottom lane with your Corky. That could be the tactic for Elements, where they will be a lot stronger after level six on the Corky itself. But we're gonna have to see what they want to do. A lot of picks left open. Another Lulu gets locked ah. in, and they take the Zed for Soren. He's had one game on that, but didn't result in a win for them. This is curious. Well, when he played Zed, he did a good job. That's but true. The, but the team didn't know how to play around a Zed. He would split push and like get a tower, get a kill, and then the other four guys would like get caught out by MYM actually was the game they lost to MYM early in the split. They would get caught out, end up dying, and Soren couldn't do anything on the Zed despite being so active early on. And this has been a champion that Elements has banned away a lot of times. They normally don't like giving Zed over to other teams, but you don't exactly expect Soren to pick it. He's been more of a mage player. Mm -hmm. So they might be a little bit surprised by this one. And also taking Lulu from Copenhagen Wolves, they can put in support, they can put in top lane, and they now avoid Lulu being there to stop Zed from popping a target with Lulu ulti. Yeah, the question remains, what does Elements answer with? They do take the Gnar, they take the Nidalee as well. So Gnar for Elements too, especially when Wicked's been playing on the team. That is something that they've been undefeated on. See if that continues the trend. And you know, yeah. for Shook on the Nidalee, we've seen it work in a variety of ways here in Europe, even now. And Shook also is a jungler who can use Nidalee's fantastic early game so well. And it's very standard now here on this patch. When Rek'Sai gets locked, then you take Nidalee into it. We heard an amazing say on the analyst that's according to him. Well, then Rek'Sai can beat everyone except for Nidalee. So this, on paper, should be a good matchup now for Elements in terms of the junglers. And we see a very different style compared to what we saw against SK, where it was Jinx, Orianna, Maokai. Full late game team fight from Elements. This case around, good lanes. You have a very, very strong mid game coming from Nidalee, Korgin now together. And when you add in a Morgana with that Black Shield, suddenly you can make some very good plays and you can set up Sieges so well because who's going to engage from the Copenhagen Walls onto a Black Shield? Black Shield, Corky, or on Italy. Mm -hmm. Or even an R in that case. So the Wolves do f finally take the Callista for freeze. They also grab a cannon for Young Buck, which means we're going to see the support Lulu coming into yeah. play this time around. I feel like the Wolves, they're, they're showing a little bit more diversity here in some of the picks. They've obviously fallen on a couple of those comfortable ones and taken advantage of what elements hasn't really banned against them. But I feel like they're also taking some risks here. They are. They are going back to this split pushing style oh. that didn't work <laughs> for them in the past. Let's see, I mean, Frog is placing the crowd Frog right now. Could be Oriana here yeah. into a Zed. It's a, a matchup where you have no pressure as the Oriana, but you can stay safe and farm. You run barrier typically or, or exhaust, and you just sit back. It does basically mean you give up all the 
control around the mid lane itself because Zed will be pushing that lane. He will be roaming between the lanes as well, which was a thing SK Gaming took full advantage of mm -hmm. last week when Frogan ran this Orianna and he built a super tanky like Rod of Ages Athenes, which was a build basically nobody liked. I think he's going to change it up this time around on Orianna, but he still will give up a lot of options for Soren now to make plays together with that Rek'Sai early. Both these coaches being very, very vocal after the picks are fully fleshed out. So Elements, I think they have a, a couple of really good ball delivery systems here. But the question is, how well are they going to take these fights? Because they have had some trouble in the past few weeks, but so have the Copenhagen Wolves. Remember, they against Fnatic, they were up four Dragons and they still weren't able to take fights. Yeah. And this time around, this is definitely a comp that's built against Split Push, again to uh, kite away from the enemy team. We'll see if they can do that. That's the thing, yeah. Um, Copenhagen Wolves, in terms of pure 5 on 5, mm -hmm. don't have any hard engage. Their way of engaging is going to be like speeding up the Rex out of cannon, have them like dive onto them with a flash and then you wild growth them, possibly. That's how you can start it. But that should be fairly easy for elements to play around, or at least predict incoming. And that's why if elements manage to do well early on, and start grouping on the Nidalee, on, on, on the Corky here with Black Shield and Orianna for peeling. That's a deadly, deadly poke comp that can really destroy your towers and just make sure you never engage onto them before it's too late. That will be the tactic for Elements. If they can pull it off, however, it's a completely different story. Yeah, it's, it's going to be one way or the other. We'll have to see. But why don't you guys let us know at home if you think Elements is going to be climbing into the playoff territory today by tweeting at Elbow Esports with your hashtags CWWIN or ELWIN. We'll see what you think the crowd that's what they think. They're pretty excited to get this game underway. The Copenhagen Wolves taking on Elements right now. Right now. Remember for Elements, they play Copenhagen Wolves today. They play Unicorns of Love tomorrow. Those are the two teams just above them in the standings, sitting as number five and number six. So they're in the playoffs, while Elements is number seven just outside. If they lose today, potentially tomorrow, then suddenly the chances of Elements getting into the playoffs are very, very slim. And that would be such a surprise when you consider the fact they were the champions last year. Very true. And now the three members of the old CLGU reunited, reunited I should say. We'll see how this one does shake out for them. They do want to get back into playoff contention. It is going to be a tall order though. They've been plagued with the indecisiveness and a number of other things, but across the split, I mean, th this, 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 this matchup is kind of highlighting how the expectations did not live up to the way things worked out. Copenhagen Wolves, their team that by all means have been overperforming, whereas Elements clearly under the yeah, radar. For sure. Before the split, nobody would have ex expected Elements to be outside of playoffs and Copenhagen Wolves to be in the playoffs and potentially even challenging for like a top four spot, despite them going 0-2 last week. But about the comps again, we talked about how Elements... Their whole goal is kiting in these fights here, punish Copenhagen and Wolves for not having any proper hard engage, good walls on the flanks from Elements, and they can always move around the lanes and just poke, hit the tower a few times, and that's how they want to play it. Where for Copenhagen and Wolves, it's obviously a 1-3-1 split one -one push we're going to see. Hurricane Callista with a Lulu in the mid lane. That's decent enough wave clear. You're going to have Kennen in a side lane, and you're, of course, going to have the Zed in the other side lane pushing it up. So suddenly, if they get the lead, get the lead then Elements won't really have many answers to stop this split pushing in. Nobody's going to hold the Z, the Z in the late game in a one-on-one. -on -one. Kennen as well is going to be more than fine into NAR, both in laning phase and also later stages of the game. So suddenly Elements will have to find other ways of creating picks. And it's not like they're running any hard engage on their side either. So they can't really just force a pick on a Kalista, a very mobile target, a Lulu for the disengage either. So this is going to be so much about the early game for both these teams here and how they, they play out their comps because none of them want to fall behind with what they're playing. Yeah, speaking of the early game, as the lane swap starts, you see Young Buck didn't quite expect that when he actually had to back away as he took way too much damage to begin this one. Sentinel going to spot out Shook as he completes his red. It means it's pretty safe for Airwalks and Young Buck to do the blue buff up in their own jungle. Wicked, meanwhile, back in the bottom lane, now on this Gnar, up against Freeze and Unlimited who should be able to zone him out if they want to. And Reckless and Crepo decided not to freeze the top wave, so they're pushing it in, allowing Yumbug to pick up quite a lot of farm on this cannon, or XP at least, while the bottom lane, beforehand at least, was frozen by Freeze on his side, trying to simply deny farm. They were already in the lane, building it up. So it, still, Wicked will get the XP, but he will probably be starved a bit from gold, where 
Which is a problem for the likes of Nara, because he really needs items to be really effective in the fight. And you can see Longsword, so he wants Hexstranger first, because he knows it's going to be so much about him being a one-on-one -on -one with Young Buck. But then what Copenhagen Wolves can do later is once that Hexstranger is completed and maybe you go to the 15 or 20 minute mark, you swap your two soul laners. You put the Zed top lane into the Nara who's sitting on a Hexstranger that does nothing against the Zed, and then suddenly he won't be able to duel him. Mm -hmm. As they brought Crepo down to the bottom, they have a little bit more pressure built up here, and as you saw over in the river, a couple of wards put down nearly resulted a bit of a confrontation there between the two junglers. Shook's going to get pinged out as he does clear his Raptor camp away. Double buff sitting on him. Meanwhile, Airwalk's sitting back in his own jungle. Let's see if Shook wants to hit up Soren. He's going to throw the spear. It's oh, nice. going to connect the shadow step. The jump, however, a lot of damage. And Shook still looking for a bit more, but he's got to be careful. He takes quite a lot, and Soren dodges the second javelin. Making sure Froggen has a good time in that mid lane here. But what Elements is trying to do is a tactic Cloud9 used last year in the finals of their NALCS, where they were playing against TSM, where they play Corky. And they just leave him super early to one-on-one. -on -one. So he gets a big level advantage because he scales so well in terms of levels. Get that level 6 for the rockets, get level 9 for your maxed out phosphor bomb, and get level 11 earlier than you normally would for the rank 2 rockets, which is so crucial in a poke comp. So that's why they're leaving Reckless so early. They could have frozen the lane instead, however, and not give Yombok so much farm and a small advantage to Reckless. Because you can see that even in the, in the, in the XP, so it's not like Rex is going to bully out Young Buck and just deny him everything. No, they're just going to share, but Element's going to have to take that one and say, fair enough, we're simply going to rely on Rex being able to group, being higher level than the other AD carry, and having this extreme amount of poke damage in the mid-game when we have our Nidalee with him. But we already saw in the last week especially that the early game decision making from Elements has not always been the best. They've, they've made some questionable calls and just kind of failed to execute in a number of ways. And that's really what's punished them in the matchups that they've had uh, over the last few weeks. I, I can't help but thinking that by putting themselves in a situation where they don't really have that much of a choice like this, it's, again, more of the same. And it, it's not necessarily right. the best thing here. Ooh. Airbox no. takes the spear. The risk is really going to be that Wicked is sharing XP with Crepo in the bottom lane, and he's getting denied quite a lot of farm compared to, uh, to Young Buck. So he will be extremely weak on his own later on in the game. And that's perfect for Copenhagen Wolves and why they're so happy with the way this lane swap is going. Because you're going to put that Zed, who's getting obviously free farm in the mid lane, getting solo XP. When he goes up and is two levels ahead of Anar, I mean, he's going to laugh at him, just kill him or force him out. And then suddenly, there's no way for elements to stop that's split push. So while they invest a lot into Reckless, it has to pay off for them in the mid game. If it doesn't, then Copenhagen Wolves will get out ahead for sure. Get out ahead indeed. So meanwhile, back in the middle, it's actually been Froggen who's been getting the better of the farm situation, but Soren's still at that level five point. Oh, as Froggen had the level advantage, he throws down the shockwave and Soren. This is going to move a little bit further back. It's actually Froggen getting a little bit of his bully on with the level advantage. Not a change from Froggen, not going Rod of Ages first on this Oriana. Instead, will be aiming for the fairly early Hourglass. Potentially just Arm Guard into Morel Nomicon. It's a fine versus a Z. Well, let's see, Airwix, what he can do. Yeah, Crepo. Look for Crepo as Wicked Head already back, but he goes right back in. Do they have enough damage for First Blood? They do! With the Ren pop, it's going to go over to Freeze, but it's not done yet. Shook going in, maybe a questionable decision. He takes too much damage in the return. Freeze is able to pick up a double just like that. Almost the worst that could happen for Elements here. Let's see Wicked teleport him back. He's not going to fight, just wants this farm here. He cannot fall further behind for himself with this. He might type again. <laughs> He's, He's not going to make it too. anytime soon. He's going to hop. Unlimited's there. They're still taking tower shots, however. Freeze. They're going to jump oh, on the no, aggro. No. So low. The smite is down. Airwalks. It's going to be Freeze with another. Ah. He goes down. It's shut down gold to Wicked. But still, 3-1 and one now on this Callista. So what happened right here is, keep in mind, Froggen had just used his ulti in the mid lane. So there was no kill pressure for him, even if he was roaming to the bottom lane. And at the same time, you have this Nar Morgana 2 on 2 dual lane that is extremely weak. Has no real response to Callista and Lulu. So Copenhagen Wolves simply said, okay, you blow your ulti mid lane, we're gonna push this bottom lane up here and we're gonna have Rek'Sai roam in behind you and we don't care who's there. We're gonna go for you and Elements were forced to run away, got caught between the towers, ends up dying, Shook kills himself after Crepo goes down first. And that was just a great play by Copenhagen Wolves realizing there's barely any risk in us going to the bottom lane now because there's no threat from the Oriana mid lane, and we know Nar sitting there as level 5. He's not going to do anything compared to a Kalista. 
Very true. However, Elements do grab something back for themselves. They secure that dragon. Gonna be able to give Frog the blue buff as well, so we'll get a little bit more of that mana regeneration for himself. So they're still making moves on the map, but the problem is it was just kind of misplayed what happened in that bottom side. Oh, completely. And it wasn't Elements making the move. It was him trying to respond to Cobra and Wolf saying that we can make a play in the bottom side now because we're going to be stronger for a certain amount of time, so we will force something onto you. And look at the difference on top laners here. Remember how Elements didn't freeze the wave top lane, and then because they wanted Koryu to get that experience advantage, left him on his own. It has meant that Young Buck has basically been free farming. He's even with Sora in the mid laner, despite being a lane swap. And Wicked is so far behind. Let's see what uh, Soren can do on Froggen. Yeah, Deathmark is down. The minions are still proccing. He's going to actually have to Shadow Step away, but Unlimited is here as well. So a pair of ultimates traded on the mid laners, but Airwalks is not going to let this one go. The flash forward for Froggen as well as the Dissonance. Bray Seeker, Smite comes in. Spear is going to connect, and that will be enough to deter Airwalks away. And we can see how Wicked here up in his top lane. He is changed his build route. He didn't want to get the early Hexstringer because he didn't get the one-on-one -on -one lane. So he needs that armor because he knows Soren is going to come towards him at some point. Or Freeze is just going to be in the lane. And we see how Copenhagen Wolves said, OK, you send our top lane. Well, we're going to send Kalista back up there because we're going to keep denying your farm. We know that Kennen can farm a lot better on his own than you can, Wicked. Especially once you get Mega now. It's really tough for you to pick up the CS. And you are so squishy here. So they keep sending Freeze and Unlimited around to deny Wicked farm. And even in that one-on-one, -on -one, well, Yombug is going to have more than enough gold and power oh, yeah. to shut him down as well. And not just him. I mean, we saw a moment ago the gold graphs indicated is about 900 gold lead for Freeze over Reckless, and that's just a testament to those kills that they were able to pick up. Reckless, though, he could be the next victim for the Copenhagen Wolves. Valks away without any help. Now Crepo comes up, but it may be too late to save this tower. Down it goes. Picked up. Thank you to Freeze, Airwax, and Unlimited. I just love the, the way Cobra Wolves play around Freeze in this case. He gets a PF Sword and Lifesteal on the first back. That is extremely strong on Kalista because her ratio on, on her E is fantastic. And it means you don't need that many spears on a target before you can rent for a sick amount of damage. Compared to if you go like say Hurricane first item where you need 7, 8 spears before you really start hurting them with your rent when you pull it. So in this case, because he's so strong with the two early kills and everything, they say, we know that we can send him to a lane and you won't be able to defend. Two and two, you can do nothing against Unlimited and Freeze, so you need to send three guys if you want to hold that tower. And that's obviously not going to happen for Elements early on. So that was basically just a free tower by Cobra Wolves sending the strongest members together, pushing. They can go back down to the bottom lane now if they want to, or the mid lane, pushing the next one because Elements still won't be able to defend against them. Yeah, and it, it seems like Elements, they've kind of been the ones backing themselves into this corner here. One tower taken by Copenhagen Wolves, and they are eyeballing the middle, but Crepo is not keen on letting them have it for free. And look how early we see this 1-3-1 setup now we mentioned in the champs. So like Zed goes to the top lane, has Cutlass completed, so he has all in potential. Yumbug, of course, is miles ahead of Wicked at this point, so he's more than fine. And you have this Kalista we just mentioned before, three early kills. Froggen is the guy, though, who can hold her, because he can wave clear very easily. But you have zero pressure again in that mid lane. It will allow Copenhagen Wolves to play around you every single time and dictate the map. Make a play in the bottom side where you know you are mid laners. In this case, Unlimited and Freeze will move before Froggen because he's forced to sit back at the tower and defend. And then you suddenly will be four guys making a play against only three for Elements, and that's obviously not going to work for Elements. Mm -hmm. Very, very smart moves for the Copenhagen Wolves. It's netted them a few results here. They've got 2,000 gold ahead of Elements. Reckless going to walk on the ward. He's got to be so careful. Soren, equal level, has that all-in potential. Will he use it, however? I think he's going to back away for now. Look at Shook here. He just picked up a tier on this back, I believe. Currently sitting on 13 mana, so he just bought it. But you run tier on Italy, the first time you go back, you just keep your Hunter's Machete, unless, of course, you go for more. But you get tier on the first back. That's important, because you need to stack it this early on. This is going to be a very late fully stacked tier by him, so it's not going to do him any good. And they're already falling behind, so not having any comments as even worse. Wicked, he's going to die down. Yep, they just there we go. take him down just like that. Wild Growth used a very big Rek'Sai, is able to pop him, so that one is picked up. Meanwhile, Soren trying to deter the Elements push on the top side as the tower in the bottom falls to two members of the Wolves. Elements get nothing out of that, except a dead Wicked. 
I mean, we mentioned how Copenhagen also have all the pressure in the mid lane, so they can now dictate the entire map. They can decide where to go in terms of the side lanes, and that's exactly what they did here. They knew there was going to be no response. Even Shook being there wouldn't have done nothing. So they take another kill, get a tower, maybe a second one. Elements managed to respond, but this is two towers giving up more farm. Oh, well, one and a half. Well, an inner tower. This one I mean, won't die, really but... really low, but... Let's see if they can take it, actually. I mean, there's so many minions here right now. Wicked's going to try to push them back, but between unlimited airwalks, they've got enough. They got it. Oh, no. Mana and damage. No, okay, <laughs> actually, Airworks gets taken pretty low. So Wicked, fan of. Wicked pulls the defense. Nonetheless, yeah, yeah, yeah. that tower is so low right now that it's not going to matter very soon. They're going to lose a lot of pressure on the bottom side One of the map. There's half a minute on this track. Froggen's still pushing in the middle, continuing this lane phase as Krepo roams around. But elements are going to need more than just a couple of dragons here and there to pull this one back in their favor. They're not down by a ton of gold, but they have seeded a lot of ground. All right, and as we mentioned before with that tier from Shook, He's putting himself in a disadvantage now. Either you get it early, so it's fully stacked around 20 minutes, and that's where you're strong, so you sacrifice a bit of mid-game for that tier fully stacked. Otherwise, you don't buy it. You don't get it this late in the game. It's sitting, on, really late game. It's sitting on like 60 mana now, so it's going to be fully stacked. At what, 28 minutes into the game itself? And he, they need him now, because Copenhagen Wolves are doing everything they want on the map here. Airwax has been yep. everywhere. He's been part of every single kill. And there's been no response from Shook. Securing that dragon, the wolves, yeah, you're right. This is this is them playing the game how they want, when they want, and where they want for the most part. And although elements have done a couple of things here and there, they've not been able to secure much more than a kill and a tower. And I suppose a dragon, while Copenhagen Wolves weren't looking. However, they're giving up so much, even in their own jungle, you see this blue buff now going down. Airwalks should be able to take that one out, no problem. And because Copenhagen was also running Rek'Sai, that gives them even a third split pushing option. So you can set up a 2-2 two two fight in a side lane and still have that Rek'Sai ulti to get to whatever ob objective or whatever lane you need to after. So there's so many options now. They've won the early game to completely spread out elements, never allow them to team fight with this Orianna, and just have her sit back, try and clear the waves in mid lane and do nothing else, which is what Copenhagen Wolves will try to do and should try to do. We see them still back in this 1-3-1. It's just a matter of time before the two side lanes have been pushed so far up that Froggen can't even sit on, the, on his own tower and wait because then you just get towered up by five guys. Roaming. Or you get pushed that hard, but Freeze gets pulled in. He's going to try to take the fight. Reckless is here to polish off the kill. The wild growth, though, is going to keep him alive for just a little while longer. Finally, Reckless gets himself on the board, and elements do collapse. That was oh so very close, and Froggen, just by the skin of his teeth. Baited out here. I think Copenhagen Wolves got a little bit surprised. We're expecting Elements to sit back in their lanes and defending against the Zed and the Cannon. And the Ele Elements managed to sneak through the jungle here and get a kill at least by a bit of time. So they gotta go stop Soren in this top lane. They're sending yeah, and he's, up there. He's getting out in time, but it, it looked for a moment that they might have paid for that one. So Reckless Krepo, they should be able to clear this wave away. But there's that constant pressure, and you mentioned three potential split pushers in Soren, in Young Buck, in Airwax. And honestly, this Copenhagen Wolves team, they don't have to straight up fight you. Yeah, they lost one right there, but it's perfectly fine. Yeah, just a little, little misplay by Freeze and by Copenhagen Wolves getting surprised. But what's so important now for Elements is that they keep up water in their own jungle. Uh-oh, deja vu. See, Wicked, there we go, as soon again. as that gets popped, Airwalks is going to move on to Wicked Unlimited. They slow him down. They don't have the damage to finish him this time around. Krepo's here, but still, Wicked has been beaten up quite a lot this game. So what Krepo tr is trying to do now is, as I said before, keep wards in your own jungle, because you know the Copenhagen Wolves are going to be pushing to side lanes all the way to your tier 2 tower, and you know they're going to roam from that side lane into the mid lane. So in order for you to have any chance of farming in the mid lane for Froggen, then he needs loads of wards in his own jungle to spot when the roam comes, when he has to back away, and also give Elements a chance of like catching out Copenhagen Wolves if they overextend it, like one guy roams on his own through the jungle. Maybe they can create a pick through like a binding or Shook finding him. And that's going to be so important. If Copenhagen Wolves manage to get control of the, of the jungle, doesn't matter which side it is, then those two towers in whichever jungle they choose will end up dying because Elements will be forced to run back to their own base onto the inhibitor, then back down to the tier 2 tower to even defend them because they won't be able to move through their own jungle. Yeah, there is a, a number of wards there for Copenhagen Wolves spotting out the movements of elements. But they are also, they have, an, they have a couple more problems than that. They're getting dragged around their own map. There's just so much pressure points. There's so many pressure points that Copenhagen Wolves can establish here. A big Oriana ball is going to deter Airwalks. The Shook comes in around the side. 
he's going to back away and set his sights on the Scuttle Crab instead. However, still some pressure soaring up in the top, 1v1ing away with Wicked. And the Wolves will back off for now. It's going to be a while before anything is on the map available for the easy picking. Luckily for Elements, they got that one dragon beforehand, so there's going to be a, be a while before they have to worry about those. We see for Copenhagen Wolves, they don't really have their pink wards or the upgraded sweeping lenses to really set up a full map control or take over one side of the jungle, which is why we can see Elements always place down a few defensive wards like we mentioned beforehand. That will buy them some time to sit back and farm, but it's only a matter of time before Wolves goes back, gets a few pink wards, two guys upgrades the sweeping lens, Oracle lens, and then suddenly you just go into the blue buff of the enemy team, place two pink wards, Oracle lens around, and you take over completely, and then you just push mid lane and bottom lane at once, both lanes pushing up, and you will be able to rotate faster than the other team and take down towers. It is what they are attempting to do here. On the side of elements, at least, Reckless pushing in away on this bottom turf. He's got to move quickly. The Dark Binding is not going to connect on Young Buck or Unlimited. We're able to dodge down. Copenhagen Wolves should not allow Reckless to do this. He should not be able to just go in on his own and poke down the tower so much. You have the stronger members. They're going for Froggen, though, in his mid lane, deciding not to. So this bot lane tower is going to die basically here. Yeah. Despite being behind, Elements has now been allowed a free tower. Airwax could have been there ages ago to defend this one because you have the map control on the side of the walls. Why do you allow Elements to get a free tower? Yeah, they, they really committed a little too heavily, I would say, to trying to punish Froggen, but a tower at half health, they didn't have enough damage to finish him off as defensive as he's playing at this point, defensive as he's building as well. Airwalk's going to settle for taking away the red buff of Elements, but they did lose that tower, so a little bit of breathing space for Elements right now. Yes, some Elements showing what they want to do with their comp. Group together, long range poke. You have the attack speed buff of an Italy on a Corky with a Trinity Force to take down towers. You have the black shield to avoid engages, peeling through Morgana Oriana. I mean, Copenhagen was allow elements to get back and group up, then there would be a pop, but they are still so far ahead. And these towers will go down because they keep getting a few hits onto them. They should be able to get this dragon as well and just continue this pressure. There's going to be nobody from elements who can defend against the Soren. Well, nobody in position to really contest this dragon either, so Copenhagen Wolves do manage to pick that one up very quickly thanks to the Void Rush from Airwalks and the quick movements of the team. Elements now attempting to push on the middle. Let's see if they can take down this turret. Not too many minions here, but if they move fast enough, they just might be able to do it. Uh-oh, Airwalks is here, however. It's at half itself. Let's see if they Look have enough damage. He wants to fight. collapse. Uh, it's going down. Okay. Goes down. Okay, so that's the trade objectives. Yeah, good move by Elements here. Realizing that once they pressure down Copenhagen goes from the mid side, they force the Wolves to go down to the bottom lane, which means they have to take a long route around the mid side, or around or back to the mid lane. So just open up for Elements to push that one in and get a free tower again. Keep it fairly even in gold, despite the Wolves being so much better in the early game. Elements have really done the best they could. Let's see Reckless here and Jumbach mm. get a fight. Instantaneous well, Valk away though. Oh, and the Maelstrom's down. Well, that is going to be a timing that Young Buck won't have access to for a little bit. So Reckless plays it safe, and he burns an ultimate for free. I think Young Buck got a little bit too eager here, thinking he was just going to ulti Reckless, destroy him. Blown for him. Didn't use Outlast, didn't use Flash. And TP, so just got to wait for that cooldown again. Yeah, and you know, Elements, give them some, some serious credit, though, in this particular game. They've not played nearly as passive as we've seen them most of this split. Oh. You can definitely see them making calls, even if they're a little slow to react. They are trying to play around the map. They are grabbing little advantages for themselves here and there. They've kept even in turrets, and they're not giving up too much to right. Copenhagen Wolves. Early game for Elements, the problem was more certain champions, like the Oriana mid lane, not able to do much. Shook somewhat failing his build a little bit in terms of early game pressure. And then the way the lane swap went for them, where they got basically no advantage for them, they got shut down in terms of the bottom lane or in terms of the top laners, and obviously didn't get a tower for it either. So that was a poorly played early game, but they have done the best. It's been good shot calling for them, picking up these three out of toes, noticing how Copenhagen Wolves give them an opening and they take it. They don't just sit back and farm and say, oh, okay, we're not going to move from out here to a turret for the next 20 minutes. No, they've actu actively been moving around the map and getting these towers down whenever they could. So that's been good. 
rotations. Yes, with uh, adaptability though, and it's been enabled by some of the wolves. Uh, I would say going a little bit too hard to try to pick kills in some of these situations. That turret picked by Crepo or by uh, Reckless rather in the bottom side. Yeah. Um, the muscle move in the middle after they gave up the dragon. So they're not giving up things for free. That's the key here. And also, Soren's kind of been stalled out on this top side. Wicked's been really hanging here as much as he possibly can, and Soren has not really been able to push in on the turret. Well, this is one of the reasons that Sway Push kind of died out somewhat in the new patch uh, in terms of killing people one-on-one. -on -one. Because when there's that shield on a tier 2 turret, and they're sitting a Gnar who already has a Randuin and Ninja Tabi, you don't want to dive him under the turret through the shield, the tower damage and everything. No, you just push the lane in. It's all about pressure now in split pushing, not killing people one-on-one -on -one like it was. Go like a few years back, season three, you would just blow people up left and right. No, all about pressure. That means for Copenhagen Wolves, it's not about kills. And that's why it's so weird they allowed elements to get these towers because you don't have to kill Froggen in the mid lane to get the mid tower. You just push it in with three guys, and then you wait for your side lanes to do all the work as well, and then Froggen will be forced to back away and you get the tower anyway. That should be the goal for Copenhagen Wolves. Not aiming for kills, just push towers, push lanes. Get just all that. the tier two turns. Do exactly like that. Like you did right there. Yeah. Uh, textbook example in that case. So Elements, again, a little slow to react on that one. They send Wicked down to the bottom after the fact to try and stem the wave that's pushing forward. But now Soren is being chased out by Reckless. Krepo not far behind. They're going to heal and prompt a flash. A big rocket's going to connect, but it won't be enough damage as he backs away. Meanwhile, the Wolves are actually pushing in on the middle. Froggen and Shook coming around the side, but this tower, it's already down to a third of its health. They're going to bail away, but Elements have allowed this and just a lapse in judgment, it seems, has netted the Wolves about a tower and a half. And that's where the pressure really comes in, because when you have Zed who can keep pushing that lane, if you want to send someone up to try and kill him, you need to send two guys. And as soon as you send two guys up, Copenhagen Wolves know, okay, there's only three guys on the bottom side of the map, we have four, we can now pressure your lanes and take your towers, or at least poke them down. So simply, by elements trying to make a play in one lane, knowing that to send at least two guys to kill one, they give up a tower on the bottom side, which would have died anyway, it's fairly low, and then lose a lot of HP in the mid lane tower. Elements are going to try to push back the minion wave here to make sure there isn't an easy chance for the Wolves to do that again. They're still sending Wicked on the bottom this time around. Soren's taking his time on the top. A lot of wards for the Wolves littering that jungle down towards the bottom side. They're keeping their dragon control smooth there. Rexai Tunnel finally getting cleared away. However, still two dragons to one is that scoreline. About 2,000 gold separate these two teams. 25 and a half into the game. The question is, oh, Krepo gets his backstop. The question is, do elements back here and try to get the map control back, or do they keep it? It looks like this is the option. This is what a lot of teams have been failing to do today, to keep their map control on the side of the dragon. What elements is noticing here is how Soren, because he had to flash away and he had to reset the whole wave up in his top side, he's, he has been at least far away from the tower there. So that bought time for elements now to move to the bottom side, Ooh. creates a play at least, get some tower damage, potentially a dragon, but they have to worry about Soren now. Wicked needs to go back and defend that tower. Otherwise, it's going to be a free one for the Wolves. Take this one, teleport back, stop Soren. There, there we go. Exactly what they need to do. That is going to make Soren back off. He barely dented, he barely scratched the tower, and he goes Meganar at the perfect moment. Now, Elements needs to back out. They have a 4v4 opportunity at this Dragon. It's 15 seconds yeah, away. Dunklux though teleporting. He's going to try for the flank. The question is, will it be enough? They've got the crab control. They know something's up, though. Unlimited moving around. Youngbuck, they haven't spotted him yet. They look for him. Oh, the Dark Binding! They've stopped the flank. And now Unlimited forced to Wild Growth himself. Here comes Airwax, however. Can he still salvage the initiation? The ball comes in, slowing down Youngbuck. That teleport completely wasted now. Soren tried to collapse, but now he has to bail out. However, the Wolves, they're starting this dragon. Can they pick it up in time? Well, let's see here. There will be a fight because elements are moving back down towards it. Frog and oh, he's the going flash. Oh, he's going to pull in Unlimited. Gets pulled by the Fates Call. It's going to get smited down the Wolf dragon, however, and that is secured by Copenhagen Wolves. They don't lose a member, but now Elements looking to Reckless. change that. Reckless into it. Airwalks oh so low. The rocket, the spear, nothing hits. And Elements, they get out with nothing there. Oh, it was close. All right, all right. So a lot of things just happened here the last minute. Again, Elements are reading the map correctly in when they can push. Whenever Copenhagen Wolves give them an opening, they take it. They saw Soren being all the way down on his own side of the top lane. So it would take him a while to push that wave up because Regis made the play earlier on to him. That's why they could go bottom lane, take a tower, teleport back with Wicked, defend the tower as well. They didn't lose anything and even managed to escape from this dragon. Sadly for them, Wolves managed to pick it up though. Yeah, the Wolves, they were able to take it in the confusion and the haste. They got themselves three to the one of elements. However, uh, again, you know, that was 
apart from the fact that they didn't pick up anybody or the dragon, that was really, really well played by Elements. There was a really clutch Dark Binding from Crepo to stop the Young Buck initiation. So he effectively wasted his teleport. They're not going to have too much of a timing window advantage just because Wicked had already spent his to go back to the yeah. top and defend. But Elements, you know, they did nothing wrong in that situation. Oh, they just no, no, no. couldn't quite yeah. pick up an advantage out of it. Managed to disengage off those well where they were about to get flanked. They did everything right, honestly. Yes, okay, dragging it over to Copenhagen Wolves, but you got the tower for it. And this is the best decision making in terms of mid to late game we have seen from Elements all split long. We've never seen them be this much on the same page. All five moving. As a unit, instantly, okay, we can get a bot tower if you go now, not in five seconds, now. Move down, get it, teleport back in time, perfect. Reckless as well, what on earth happened right there? He just jumped into the enemy team, Reckless. Trust the guy who normally, that his team the was guy there. Who normally yes. jumps away from the enemy team, he went aggressive. He didn't manage to get a kill for it, but that was a different style. Very different, and, and you know, this is, you gotta wonder how much of it is Crepo coming into this team? How much of it is them just internally reflecting on it? Regardless of the reason, Elements, they do look like a totally different team in this situation. The question is, can they beat this Wolf squad? They are holding strong in the middle, a lot of damage onto Airwalks, but now Soren is pushing in the bottom. Wicket's going to be there to defend. They're covering their bases so far. Right. Let's agree they look different in the mid to late game. Mm -hmm. Early game is the same problem as before. They fall extremely far behind. It was why they lost to SK, picked a super late game comp, misplayed the lane swap, or well, misplayed the early game, mm -hmm. got in a terrible 2-2 two two lane, and... But they game, picked it back up. The game was basically over from that point, but in this game... Oh, you mean this game? Yeah, I, I'm just saying that their decision-making mid to late is a lot better now, mm -hmm. but they still struggle early game to pull through. Two games in a row now has been the problem for them, and why they're falling behind. Yeah, they... They have got themselves behind 2,000 gold, but they haven't let that gap widen at all. So the longer Very this true. game has gone on, 30 minutes now on the clock, they've been able to keep the Wolves at bay from really getting any more of an advantage. We haven't seen too many towers falling in a while. It's actually been 4-4 four to four on the scoreline, and it's just elements showing up their defenses in an active rather than passive faction. Really been trying to move Copenhagen Wolves around the map. The problem for elements, though, is in terms of like late game team fighting. Corky is gonna be worse than a Callista. Kennen obviously is great in late game fights, and a Rek'Sai compared to an Italy, I'll take that basically every game in terms of fighting itself. Italy offers her strong single target burst and a poke, but pure team fighting, I'll take the Rek'Sai over. So Copenhagen Wolves, it's not like they're in a bad spot going completely late game here. It's gonna be so much about who can outplay each other mm -hmm. and who can actually get that engage. Because for now, the walls are just going to keep splitting. And you can see the type of things that Elements are going for in their builds in particular. I want to talk about uh, Shook. You know, he goes for the Iceborne Gauntlet. So that's what we used to see on, like, the top lane Bruiser Nidalees of uh, last season. This time around, he picks it up. He's, he's maxed out on his tier stacks, but he hasn't upgraded the item. And they're going to try to not just poke, but try to slow down so they can get the chase on. And it is a little bit curious the way they're going about it. it but I feel like it, it can work if they can bait Copenhagen Wolves into a greedy engage. Yes, if they can bait Copenhagen Wolves into like a 5-on-5 five five in the mid lane, where the Wolves try to speed up the Rex side to engage, and he then gets slowed down by, you know, Oriana, by the Icebound Gauntlet now from Shook, and then you get that kite going, where you land rockets, you land spears, and you land poke from Oriana. That's how you want to set it up until you land the Binding from Crepo, and that's your go signal to like catch someone out. So that's basically just purely for kiting from Shook's side, and because there's quite a lot of physical damage on the side of the Copenhagen Wolves as well. So he's going for a bit of like Bruiser Kite, Peel thing for himself. See, they're a little bit jumpy though. As soon as Airwalk throws down the ward, Shook moves away, hoping to not get jumped on. They will clear the Rek'Sai Tunnel out after a fashion. However, Copenhagen Wolves still pushing. They're still doing the 1-3-1 for the time being, but they're not committing too heavily to trying to take the fights Elements still showing up their defenses. Let's see if they're able to get something here. 30 seconds on the Drake. No one can afford to give up any members. And Yomark has gone Abyssal Scepter. We see it very often when you're against multiple AP champions, and it's not a bad item. The problem is when you go Abyssal Scepter, you delay your core damage item. You delay your Void Staff. You delay your Death Cap, which we normally would see. And because he's the only magic damage threat on Copenhagen Walls, then it's going to be very important that Elements have to respect him and buy MR. But for now, he's not going to be that strong. He needs the death cap. He needs that void stuff before he can really start blowing up targets and force elements to buy MR. Otherwise,
They can focus on the armor like we saw with that gauntlet from Shook. Yeah, now because of that quick Baron attempt, and it looks like Copenhagen Wolves might be going back to it. They have actually proc'd it, but they move off of it. This is a chance for Elements to take this dragon. Soren, he's kind of sitting between all the members. Shook is going to be able to polish this one off. The Baron is being started, though. Let's see if they have enough damage to take it down. Soren running interference duty. Wicked on the top side. He's got Frog teleport if he needs up. it. Yeah, Froggen's taking his blue. Oh, wait a minute. The Wolves, they're kind of being a little indecisive themselves. Turning on to Krepo now. Exhaust is down on Freeze. The Baron has softened them Where's up. Wicked? And Wicked's going to teleport oh, on in. Hops out of the Baron Pitto as it regens. So they get the dragon, they stop the Baron. They do burn a teleport for it. Yeah, Wicked should have cancelled that one. Yeah, now he's going to have to go back. Well, he's going to push the minions on the top, but this, this doesn't oh, free Soren up to continue so pushing on the bottom. Or whatever, but That's true. So dragons over to Elements. Covering Wolves didn't want to fight it. Instead, they were trying to bait that Baron. We see it often with Kalista because you get so many Ren stacks on a target. And Freeze has gone for this very AD focused build where if you have, let's say, 15 stacks, that's a lot of damage from your Ren with the AD ratio it does have. In the end, we can say Elements win out or won out by mm -hmm. getting that dragon. Yeah. TP blown by Wicked is a big deal though, because again, it's all about the side lanes for Copenhagen Wolves. And if Wicked is stuck there in a one on one against the likes of a Zed, he won't be able to do anything, and suddenly the big tank is missing from Elements. That's also why we see Copenhagen Wolves go straight back to this one. Because now, Yumba can push the bottom lane, and the only guy who will be able to like one on one him is either going to be Reckless, the AD carry, who you need at a Baron fight, or the Gnar, the big tank, who you also need at a Baron fight, but they don't have that TP advantage. So Yumba basically has a free lane now to push up, and as long as Copenhagen Wolves stay around the Baron itself, they will force elements to respect it. Yeah, they're continuing this 1-3-1. That's really all they need to do. Now, they might have caught Shook. The Prey Seeker goes in. Freeze is jumping forward. That's going to prompt a flash, actually, from Elements Jungler. As the Wolves start to push up, they're pressuring all the lanes at once. Elements, they're being a little indecisive here. Youngbug, he's going to be able to clear away a lot of those minions. The Lightning Rush helping out there. And here comes Wicked. He had to take the slow path, however. Froggen moving up to defend against this Zed on Soren. So what Copernic was doing here, and the goal for them now is to get control of this topside jungle. That's why they pushed every lane at once, knowing once again you have to teleport, you can be five guys. And then as soon as the mid lane was pushed up, they walked straight into the jungle, cleared at least a few wards, but because elements were there, the wards had to respect it and just back away. But that was the whole goal here, goal for them. Three lanes pushing, and then get control of the jungle so you can start this Baron and spot elements moving to try and stop you. Yeah. They're going to start it up again. Freeze, they're feeling confident with the three members that they can do it. This well, is Wicked's not game. here. Wicked's not around. He's hanging out, trying to defend against Youngbuck, who's got the teleport advantage if this does turn into a fight. Soren, he's still up on the top side. He's going to take the turret. The Dark Binding connects. They've stopped the Baron, but they've given up a tower for it. Soren now could look to collapse on this three-man squad of elements as they move back to middle, now joined by Reckless. And Soren's still up in the top. Yeah, all Copenhagen Wolves is doing is forcing elements to leave their lanes and go down towards this Baron here to stop it. You have to respect the Kalista and her rent damage. So it gave a free tower for Soren here. They're simply just pulling them away from the side lane. Even so, we could try and move himself. Just by starting the Baron, then you disengage if anything is about to happen. And you go back and you can do the same because there's still no teleport. Soren won't really be able to push the inhib tower though. He's gonna get too far when he can get collapsed on, so now he's joining his team instead here. Wash, rinse, repeat. They can just keep trying this Baron out and keep pulling elements the direction they want them to, but they're not putting nearly enough damage on it to seriously take it just yet. Meanwhile, Reckless, he's gotta move away. Soren's up there. That could be a dangerous proposition. Even with Quicksilver Sash, he's got attached to his hip right there. The Wolves still poking away at this Baron. Yeah, still behind. It's yep. going to be 5 versus 4. It is going to be if they get the collapse on in time. Froggen's going to sight Youngbuck out. He does a lot of damage to him. However, Baron, it's going to be moved away from Soren backs off. And now it's the Wolves being a little indecisive as five members of Elements collapse up in here and look to push down the middle. But this is their defensive warding that was highlighted way earlier in this game, how important it is for Elements to keep wards in their own jungle because that's where Copenhagen, Copenhagen Wolves is going to play around. They've kept these wards all game long, so they saw the teleport come in and they backed away, they split up as well, so not like three guys running together getting ulted by Cannon, no. Split up, you disengage, you played super smart, and you basically forced Copenhagen Wolves to back away from that Baron. However, Airwax, the Rek'Sai screen to put himself a little bit above 
This element squad is still a 5v4 because Soren's still on a mission. Youngbuck a little bit low. This tower is going to go down in the middle. They have sent Wicked back, however. He teleport. Oh, he's not got the teleport yet. Excuse me. He's just regular backs. Meganar to push Soren away. A few seconds away, he'll have that advantage. Tries to get the smash as he throws the boulder, but Soren is already on the retreat. The rest of elements coming up to collapse. If they can pick Soren off, they'll have a numbers advantage to start oh, something. Just Soren. Push mid here. Yeah, he's trying to fight. Oh, the Nar in the wall. No, it's not going to happen because Soren just eats so much damage. Reckless comes up with another. However, the Wolves are doing exactly that to Fischio. They're moving towards the mid. They take down the inner turret. Here comes Froggen. He's not going to engage on to Airwalks just yet. So it's a tower for tower all said and done, but they do pick up Soren. It's a number advantage for the next 40 seconds. Yeah, we got to a point now where Wicked has enough armor to really stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Zed. He just doesn't really want to try and kill him, but at least defend well against him. We just saw the Wolves, though. Because Elements invested so many guys on the top side, free mid lane. For them, you got the Hurricane Kalista to push it in, so that was just a good response. In the end, now suddenly Elements get control of the Baron. They've been behind all game long. The Wolves have started probably five, six times. Now it's Elements' turn. Zed is still dead for 14 seconds. This is a 5 versus 4 for them now. Yeah, still technically a smite fight. We'll see if Airwalks can make it happen. Baron softening up Elements, but this is the shot calling that they have been trying to achieve all split. However, Youngbuck's in the middle. Froggen is going down. It's Youngbuck that picks him up. Krepo with the Sonya's Hourglass. All of a sudden, it's still a 4v4. Looks like make that a 4v3. Copenhagen Wolves moving forward, looking to pick up more. Wicked, he's the one who's caught this time. The Baron helped out oh. immensely in this one. Wicked is going down to freeze. The Spear's going to connect, but Airwalks, it barely tickled, and the Baron was Elements undoing. Elements have done so many good things in this game in terms of the late game and the decision making. That Baron, though, especially when you play a poke comp, you can never get caught in a Baron pit against the likes of a Cannon, a Rek'Sai. That would be your doom, basically. That's really all you can say about that. And finally, after several attempts, the Wolves are able to secure the Baron after picking up a 3-4-0 fight. 40 minutes into this game. Let's take a look at how that all shook out, though. All right, again, so, yes, it's only four guys from the Copenhagen Wolves, but you have a comp that needs to poke beforehand with a very squishy back line. Froggen, look at him. He's dying almost just to the Baron and Jumbuck alone. And suddenly, the Wolves are stronger. There have been so many good calls. That one was not needed by Elements. They could keep playing the map like they did. They had Wicked strong enough to handle his Zed suddenly in a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, the Copenhagen Wolves, though. Get a dragon as well, we saw it down in the pit. Mm -hmm. And there really wasn't anything Elements could do after the fact. So four dragons to two. They've got the Baron buff on their side. It's going to be the Wolves, really, in control of this one as they clear out the large minion wave in the bottom, courtesy of Soren. But where do Elements go from here? Uh, for Elements' side, well, they've lost all the outer turrets. They've lost the Baron now. Suddenly, the options you do have have been very limited so far. I mean, and they've pulled away, really, in the gold lead, too. It was about 2,000 for most of this game. Now they've extended that up to about 7, thanks to that big fight and the Baron that they did take down. Continuing to push the waves here. Taking it out over in the jungle side. But Airbox is actually going to get himself caught. A big hit squad from Elements is going to chase him down, and Reckless picks up his third kill of the game. <laughs> Well, I guess that was a play they could make. Yeah. At least get one kill. If they get back in time to defend here... They can do a lot more, yes. But, uh, well, Froggen, it looked like he was going to take a lot of damage from those Callista Spears, but not so. Soren is going to move back. Suddenly, the Wolves don't look so hot on pushing in, in another 4v5, not when it's under Elements turrets. No, no, no. We are too far into the game. Death timers mean a lot now. That's yes, true. exactly. And there's so many items on all the important members now. Baron buff is not that good that you just take a 4v5. Mm -hmm. And you've only got four members. That was it. a great pick by Elements. Probably the best thing they could do. Sit in a random bush, pick off a target when they were expecting Wolves to go into again that 1-3-1. One, one, pick mm -hmm. or push every lane. It was Rek'Sai that was sending there. That was honestly the best play they could make. And managed to survive this Baron buff going over to the Wolves. Because it should be running out fairly soon now. Yeah, two members in the top. It's going to be that bot lane pushing once again. And three members of Copenhagen Wolves trying to push in the mid side, but Wicked and Froggen are both here. Not to mention Shook hanging around the back. Soren's still going to be able to push it out in the bottom. But so far, the split push, I mean, it's not yielded to them a lot here. They've gotten a turret out of it, maybe two. But really, it's been the Wolves off the back of, uh, you know, good fights and good flanks that they've been able to get most of their objectives this time. But that is the whole goal when you are split pushing now, is you allow yourself to get these flanks 
where the enemy team can either take the fight or just back away and lose the tower. And that's why Copenhagen was taking all, down all these out of turrets and why they have been able to get some kills. Even though it's been a fairly low kill or low score game. In that sense, it's been a lot more about map pressure, quick rotations, and of course, dragons and barons. True, for the amount of time it's gone on, it really has been more about those objectives. Airwax is back at it again. Up in the top side, Soren is going to be faced off against Wicked. In the bottom, makes his way over towards the mid, as the Wolves now with Sans Baron buff, still attempting to push this one in. But there's enough wave clear here for the elements to outlast for a little while yet. Yeah, and now once you've been pushed all the way down to your base, suddenly those jungle wards don't really benefit Cobra Wolves anymore because Elements is just running in their base anyway. They're running from inhib to inhib, so it's a very easy and short route they have to take to go back and defend these lanes. So that makes this last push extremely hard. Before you can play around the jungle, you can't anymore. You simply just play on pushing lanes one by one, which means the Wolves, we might just see them say, we're not going to make any plays. We're just going to wait for the last dragon to spawn, get that dragon, then go potentially get a Baron, and once we're completely buffed up, then we start going for the pushes because suddenly we have Baron, of, Baron buff minions that you won't be able to just defend in a one-on-one -on -one and easily wave clear. They will do a lot of damage to your inhib towers. That could be the tactic for the wolves, unless they want to take a somewhat risky dive in one of the lanes. I don't expect to see that there. Yeah, I don't expect it either for the time being. They are still trying to keep pressure on the side lanes in particular, but you know, giving it up at the first sign of danger just says that they're not dedicated to taking serious risks. Dragon's up in about two minutes here. Elements, they need to wrestle some map control back if they want to stop this Dragon number five. Well, it's going to be the go-to thing for them, but it's going to be tough. Because Copenhagen Wolves should have full ward control, uh, ward control in the blue buff area and mm -hmm. down towards the Dragon, so they should be able to spot Elements all the way. And one bad move here, the walls are in your base and they're taking your inhibitor, they might even be taking your nexus from elements because they've been pushed so far back. Yombak has finally now completed Void Staff, so he will be a threat in terms of these fights. You can see on the side of, 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 of elements, it's almost just all armor items. They haven't been really afraid of Yombak so far. Now they have to respect his damage though. Yeah, he's starting to get stacked up pretty seriously in this game, 617 AP, how's about that? A minute on the Dragon, a minute 30 on the Baron, Wicked. Get pushed back, and you know, again, they have to keep this defense going. Open Hanging Wolves aren't allowing any room to breathe. Elements is gonna have to make a practice decision sooner or later. Because even if they, because if they don't do anything, they're just gonna lose out eventually anyways. Flash there, burnt oh. by Soren. For the cost of a binding, I suppose that's a good trade. Very good trade, but there was two guys showing in the bottom lane against one. Suddenly, Copenhagen Wolves have a numbers advantage elsewhere and take a cross map objective. Yeah, and Krepo's going to try to make something happen on the top. Ooh, the two quick flashes. flash. Yeah, another one. So Krepo's forcing these summoners. But again, the Wolves, they're pressing all three lanes right now. They're dragging elements across the map. But this suddenly means the potential dragon fight. It's going to be a lot harder for Copenhagen Wolves to pull off. No flash in your AD carry, no flash in your mid laner either. A good ulti from Froggen. That's going to pull in Freeze and more or less one-shot him. Very, very are quick. moving down. They knew it was Bobby happening realized. the Rex ice cream. Yeah. It's a 1v1 in the top, but Wicked's not so healthy. They've got the crab control. Elements, they only have one way to go through here. They only have one chance. There's, you're right, there's no flash in the carries, but look how fast this dragon's going down. They have to go for a smite seal. They oh, and they get it! Yes, they deny Dragon 5, but can they stay alive now? Shook getting popped in the quick one, but Freeze kiting back. Not enough. They trade a jungler for a carry and a support. Elements, they make the call. They make the decision. They deny the Wolves Dragon 5, but now they've got to get back and defend, Deficio. I can't believe they did that. Got down and shook, stole it. Yamak won't be able to do anything. He needs to be careful he doesn't get caught out here because Elements are coming from different sides. Yeah, they are. Oh, he's going to burn his flash too, but so is Reckless. A lot of damage. The Maelstrom's thrown down. He's going to pop his Zanyas, but that's just going to delay that's the inevitable. Be now Another for one. Reckless 5 kills this game. You're right. Immediately making a beeline over to the Baron pit. All Yamak tried to do here was buy time for his team and force Elements to go to the bottom lane instead of to the Baron itself. They might even just aim for inhibitors. Yeah, you're right. Dead. They don't have to take the Baron in this situation. The death time they is just so long. They can get the so I think, go Baron after as well if they want to. Soren is still pushing bottom, but he's going to be met by Wicked. Elements, they have a chance to take some serious, serious objectives. Youngbuck's still down for 50 seconds. Unlimited for 5. Freeze for 20. Airwalks, he can't defend this by himself. Well, that's going to be inhibitor for sure for Elements. 
Freeze up in 10 seconds, 40 on Yumbuck. Honestly, just go straight to Baron after this one and you will be able to pick it up as well. This time around, you don't have to be afraid because Kennen is the one you have to respect inside the Baron pit. See if Elements wants to do it. Yeah, let's take a look at how that amazing steel shook out. Right, so remember there's no flash on Freeze, there's no flash on Soren either. And this is just Shook going in, he gets that smite. Fifth Dragon denied, and obviously when Freeze gets locked down, TV from Wicked. He's not able to dance around. Remember, Callista was slightly nerfed a little bit in terms of her kiting. No Baron though by Elements, decided to play really safe. I have to be careful that Governing Wolfstone started. It looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. However, the Elements a little revitalized after this one. Can they get back and defend all five members in the area? Shook, maybe he fancies another Baron steal. The Wolves aren't going to fancy that fight. They immediately back out. So Elements, they may not have taken it, but they still maintain some serious control over that area. And an inhibitor taken in the middle. They're looking to push down super minions and all. They've got pressure in the side lanes now to yep. fish The tables, it seems, have turned. Top lane has built up quite a large wave that Elements can go and push in as well. While they, for the first time, can take control of the Copenhagen Wolves jungle and suddenly be the ones to dictate which objective are we starting and are you forced to come and now face check onto or into a binding. Krepo, he's been on point. Because oh yeah. The flashes before the dragon fight, beforehand as well, they've been hitting or forcing that, summons. That, honestly, that resulted in a number of kills too. I mean. You could see how fast they melted Unlimited. Okay, yeah, he wasn't the one trying to escape necessarily, but then Freeze, he wasn't able to kite back fast enough. A flash might have saved his life because they were focusing so much on him, they may have stalled the fight out. Nonetheless, Elements, they answer back with a few more. And Reckless, he's really been taking the aggressive path this game, trusting his team to be at his back, and they've not let him down. 5-0-1 -on, on the score so far, and it's worked out quite well for them. All right, so look at the bottom lane here. That wave is pushing for Elements. What they're doing now is waiting for that wave to reach the inhibitor and force Kobrang and Wolves to send someone down to defend it. They can start it now, but if Kobrang was showing himself, they might just back away and wait for the wave itself. Let the minions do some work. Backing away from this Baron here, reset it. You don't have to fight right now. Look at the bottom lane, just wait. Let it do some work. No TP for Yomok. They have to time on it from the Dragon beforehand. Keep it cool. Just wait indeed now. Copenhagen Wolves looking to push in the middle. Just. Uninhibitor tower is going to separate it, but Elements, they can push back now. They've got the Meganar for a few seconds. Big wave in the top. You see Reckless around the side. They could clear the waves out. It's actually the middle is going to push itself away. And Elements, they can go right back to doing this. No one from the Wolves is moving to defend the bottom side. Vision continually being cleared away. The spear is going to connect. No damage on that one. It's two minutes till the dragon on the clock, but the Baron is in everyone's sights. Where well, the Wolves are staying here? They know they need to stop this Baron here and potentially get a big fight. Two guys starting it by Elements, I like this. The other three is zoning away. There's no vision for Copenhagen Wolves to spot what's going on, but there's gonna be a fight. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be Airwalks. Oh, it's gonna be Froggen who actually throws down the Zonny's Hourglass, flashes away from the Maelstrom, Soren though, picks up Krepo in all the confusion. Froggen, he's gonna land oh! a massive shockwave. That could be the fight for Elements. Can they keep the chase on? Young Buck going down, Airwalks tunneling away to safety. It's a two for two, but the minions, they're still pushing on the bottom to Fischio. I think that just saved Elements right there. It looks so bad for Froggen. He was being caught out here, he had to Hourglass, everything and then he pulls a four-man shockwave. So much damage like him. There's gonna be a tower for him. Bottom lane is gonna be really low as well. And they got the Baron. Yeah, they managed to take it out. They managed to take another tower. They pulled so many members of the Wolves after that to just to try and defend on the bottom side. There's a dragon in another minute. Elements, they've really turned this around, but we gotta see that again. Right, so again, these three guys here from Elements are trying to zone away Copenhagen Wolves while they finish the Baron. Look at Froggen here. He's in so much trouble. Krebel's sacrificing himself. And now, the Shockwave onto four guys. They're so low suddenly. Baron being picked up. The rest of Elements can now chase them away while the minions are doing work. This bottom lane dropped all the way down to 90 HP. It will of course, get some HP back, but suddenly that's a few hits from Elements and that's how it's down. Dragon is going to be the next objective, fourth one for them, or the potential fifth one for the Wolves. TP ready for Yumbuck, he's coming up in a few seconds. Froggen does not have TP, he won't be there in time, he needs to run. Did you move on, Froggen? He doesn't have any summoners either, this could be a close fight. Should the Wolves want to take it, they look interested in doing just yeah, but a lot of poke. They're utilizing that crucial part of their team composition that they have to deter the Wolves from trying to take this. And 
You know, they're hanging in the back, but the dragon, they can just pull this one out if they want, clearing the vision, so this is going to be blind. Limited is opening wolves. Yeah, Limited, they're, they're going to back away. They're giving this one up. Giving off the dragon. Two elements. Wow. Four this dragons game. to four, Deficio. This game has been absolutely it's, insane. It's 53 minutes on the clock. It may be low kills, but there have been a lot of objectives traded all across the board. And Elements, a yeah. couple of save situations has really got them right back into this. And just remember, this game is so important for both the teams regarding the playoff spots. Elements cannot afford to lose to Copenhagen Wolves, the team just above them in the standings. Elements outside of the playoffs, seeing as number seven at the moment. They have to beat Copenhagen Wolves, they have to beat Unicorns tomorrow, and suddenly they're in the top six. And on the other hand, the Wolves, they really want to get that uh, playoff, Young better Buck's playoff behind, seeding. But let's see how this one does shake down. Airwalks, he's going to stop by the Dark Binding. Young Buck in the back with the Maelstrom. So much damage. Wicked hopping on. He's not Megan R just yet as the Death Mark procs. Airwalks in the middle is a very big wreck side, but not enough damage. And Wicked is still causing some panic in the backside. Finally goes down, but Young Buck is too low to continue the fight. He'll have to back away. It is still technically a 4v5, but not anymore. Frog as the wreck side backs away. Yeah, oh, Froggen does. Wave. There we go. On the fountain. Airwalks is coming back in. Run. He wants to go again, and Elements, they have to bail out the Chilling Smite. Airwalks, he's got himself so much damage. He's tanking it all up. Elements deter the Wolves yet again. Elements didn't find an opening here to pull the Shockwave for Froggen, so they constantly had to just kite back, avoid this crazy ulti from Yombok with on the late game cannon. But that engage again. The binding from Crepo onto Airwax stopped him from going in and knocking off the targets, allowing Elements to kite back away from this cannon here. And at least stay alive with four guys. Back to defend. 30 seconds on Wicked. Four dragons for each. Okay, let's see again. So notice Crepo here with the binding. You see the flank coming. TP and then Airwax. He locks him up first, so he's not able to go in and knock off these three guys from Elements. And they're able to now kite back get out of the ulti from the cannon. They don't have an opening. You see, there's no shockwave from Froggen. Nobody from Copenhagen was sitting together. Okay, maybe there that he could have pulled it and got two guys, but he didn't. Instead, Wicked ends up dying for it. The rest of Elements can stay alive after some good kiting. Woo. This game is just so crazy, Deficio. I think, I think I might, oh, he misses on the shot. Yeah. I think I might be, I think I might be justified in saying this is probably the most action-packed game we've ever seen Elements play in this split. <laughs> and of course, L2 element style. It's, yeah. not in, in, it's not in terms of kills, it's more objectives yeah. than well, and towers 11 to 9. Down. I mean, it's, it's not, yeah, it's, it's been a little bit low, but you take a look at how the roller coaster of this has been. Copenhagen Wolves, they've held the gold advantage for almost all of the game, Again, but it's like diminished over the last yeah. few minutes. It's like watching Tour de France here and the stage, they have to basically <laughs> overcome the mountains and everything. Elements are still holding on. Still holding strong. But the Copenhagen Wolves, they still got a slight lead here. They're still threatening on elements. It's four dragons to four. The next one will be absolutely massive for either of these teams. And again, as you said before, a win means so much. Elements, they're trying to come back into the playoff contention. Copenhagen Wolves, they're trying for pole position in the playoffs. And, you know, you can tell both of them, they're playing it and out. They're trying not to make a mistake, yes. but it's so, so close. And elements are trying to prove this is the correct roster. There's been so many changes over the last week. I mean, Wicked getting benched and then he was back suddenly. Kreppel coming instead of Nif. Nif then starting as an assistant coach last week, losing to head coach this week, and obviously being there for pick and bands. They all talk very highly of him, saying he's doing a great job already. So, this is a lot of improvement this for really is, is the week for Elements to show this is the right roster, potentially going in towards the playoffs if they can make it there. This game is not over. Copenhagen Wolves setting no. up another flank. Airwax is there. No TP for Yombok this time around, but he does have a base gate. Thank you, Riot, for that one. Allowing him, potentially, to get around. Yeah, Crepo's still there with the Dark Binding. That one goes a little bit wide. You can see Yombok moving back. Airwax still hanging patiently, but there's a big minion wave in here. And the poke away. The inhibitor, it's not quite down. Here's the flank, Wicked. He's not got Meganar just yet. There's the Maelstrom for Youngbuck as he's exhausted away. But a death mark in the back is gonna make Shook. It looks like not quite pop, but he does go down. And so does Crepo. A shockwave pulls in the members of the Copenhagen Wolves. But is it enough damage? I don't think so. Airwalk, they're coming up with even more. Froggen now and Reckless on the chase back. They've caught Youngbuck. However, the Wolves still have the massive number advantage. It's a three to one. So, Airwax is fairly low here. He can die easily. The Wolves, they're gonna try and push in. At least get an inhibitor. What minions do they have? Top lane, small wave. Bottom lane is pushing up for them. They're pinging the mid lane here. Let's see if Elements can manage to defend. Two guys left. Frogan. Oh. 
cancel the recall. He does. He can't get away just yet. He's going to try to keep no the backup. No minions here yet. Yeah, there's no minions just yet. So Freeze and Soren are actually tanking this tower for just a moment. Frog and continue to kite around. Airwalks is there, actually. Can he make the 1v1 happen? No, there's a flash away from the Rek'Sai. And there's a turret taken down. Inhibitor is bare. Reckless is not able to defend it. Airwax still sending the Prey Seeker, continually stopping Froggen's back as Freeze and Soren just try to wreck through the base. Can they do it? They won't be able to. No minions and Reckless here. He's too strong defending. Unlimited joining in. 10 seconds on Kripo. Shield coming as well. <laughs> oh, Whoa, okay. We gotta kill. Hello, Reckless coming up with another one. These two teams, be now. they just continue to slug it out. This is like seconds. watching two boxers. Fifth Dragon the and Baron potentially for elements now if they manage to regroup as a team, get that Dragon first, maybe even a kill more to see if on Lima can get away. Froggen, he's still not recalled. Oh, yeah, wait. Those Prey Seekers. He's, oh, he's going to do oh, it again. And again. Yeah. He should just run in and take the inhibitor. Oh, oh he might uh -oh, die the teleport. No, Froggen, he takes down Airwalk, but he's going to die as well. Young Buck takes him down after the fact. What is this game? Unlimited now being chased out by elements of flash forward fresh Shuck as he throws another spear. It goes wide. Just I don't get even know what's going now. on. Just go back and get that dragon. Or inhibitor. Get the inhibitor first, then dragon. They're looking for it, maybe. Get it's still ahead of the He's going so low. The oh, rocket. He's gonna oh, he's going to go down again. The Foss Bomb. It's going to be Shuck. Wait, can that you finish him now? up. That inhibitor goes oh, down. No minions, no, minions. Elements, no minions at all. No minions. Go bot, though. There's no minions, yeah. but there's all no right, tower. Right. Two inhibitors now. You still got them. Dragon, he's still got that Baron. 40 seconds on Airwax. He has ulties and it tunnels nearby. There's one behind the Dragon, but Big it requires the Wolves to defend it and peel off. Yomba has no TP, so he won't be able to join. There's going to be fifth Dragon now for Elements. Baron is well after. About an hour into the game. Dragon's going to go down so quick. That's number five for Elements. And after Copenhagen Wolves were so close to it, they've got that one secured. They can rotate up to the Baron. They can take that one if they want. Still 14 seconds on the Rek'Sai, 38 on the Cannon. Unlimited's already there. They're going to see this, but so what? They can't do anything about it. No, no, no. Nothing they can do. You don't want to go into 4v5 here. It'll be too scary. Instead, try and outplay me. Even though they're going to have those buffs, you need to just make a 6 sick play in your own base. You're going to have all inhibitors down soon. Man, Pyro, this game is absolutely insane. This is nuts. 60-30 on the clock. The crowd, they're stamping their feet to this one. Almost 100,000 gold apiece for these teams. And Elements, they've got all the buffs they need right now. Can they close this one out with two inhibitors down? And I just can't believe they are back as almost CLG EU. And then we get this full late game thing where they fall behind early, been behind for such a long time, and yet they still manage to come back and they refuse to lose. Get all the dragons. Five now for them. Got the Baron as well. Pulling an absolutely insane comeback. And it's been on the backs of some really stellar plays, team-wise and individually. I mean, Frog and Shockwaves, that one, that massive one over by the Baron that pulled them out of that. Shook's amazing dragon steal. I mean, this whole game has been like a highlight reel. A whole bunch of LCS big plays across the board. For sure. And a lot of minions dying. Oh, yes. Who are minions? All right. So, Comrade was setting up a flank. Use the sweeper, they're gonna be spotting out it, going in! Oh, but they are bailing out, it's Elements that is. However, Wicked could be in some trouble as well. The Black Shield not quite popped on that one. And, and now might have been the a chance blown. for Copenhagen Wolves. There's no flash or TP for Yomax. He won't be able to get in a good position. You got super minions pushing down the bottom lane. They're gonna push in the mid lane as well. They keep trying. Another binding for Krepo, denying that one. Look at the pip here. That tower is going down very fast. No one's fast. defending it. Yeah, they're going to have to bring Freeze down. That tower, it's going to go. It can't defend it now. It's a 5v4. There's no minions here just yet, but they're about to be elements. Just tanking it. The minions be damned. They're going to go for this one. Baron empowered. Here comes Young Buck and Unlimited. They're going to back out almost back. immediately. Yeah, they can't take this fight. The tower is going to start falling. There's just spears and projectiles flying all across the way. They've managed to save one Nexus turret. Elements, I just feel like they're slowly choking Copenhagen Wolves. The wolves are doing what they can here. This guy just got to defend. I mean, try and buy time. You need Flash ready on that cannon first. Flash on Airworks as well for this last fight, and hopefully one of those buffs from either Baron or Dragon can run out. They got to go back again, though. Again, There's another wave of it. Oh, yep. They're going to try. They're going to try to force the fight. Let's nope. see if they can. Nope, they're getting pushed away yet again. Elements, they just keep yo-yoing back, and no one from the Wolves can do anything about it. Tower at half its health. They got to get back and defend. Not a wave of minions just yet. Elements still not pushing this one in. It's halfway down on its health, though. And they're still taking pot shots whenever they can. Deficio Reckless, though. Oh, so Woo! low. Danger zone. Wow. 
All right, he thought he could get a few hits on that tower. Meanwhile, that back in Elevate oh, space. Yeah. Of course, the zoom is from before, from the Copenhagen was there pushing in now. More minutes to defend that one. Action is here still. Tower's taken Next out. Tower's down, but there's yeah. enough minutes to defend. This Dragon has run out. No oh, longer so the close. double buffs from Elements. Baron will run out soon. Copenhagen Wolves have managed to defend this one. They got a good push in the mid lane to make that one basically handle itself. And it was all about the bottom lane and trying to defend the tower. It's still super low. One or two hits from Rekus and it goes down. Yep, and there, there it goes. Go. So a long, long, hard earned tower goes over to Elements, but they lost a Nexus turret. They traded one thanks to the minion efforts of both teams. They're looking for the final inhibitor here to fish you, but that, those other two are starting to come back up. And again, it's back to four dragons to four. It is indeed. And Youngbox Flash is ready in just a few seconds. Now he needs to ulti before Copenhagen Wolves can fight. Those heals. It's quite a lot of AP on the side of Shook to make his heal quite beneficial there. Airwalks caught in a binding. Here we go. Last inhibitor, will it fall down before the others do come back up? It looks like that is the case. Now they can get out of town. Now they can move out to the middle and keep pushing in. One Nexus turret's all that remains of Copenhagen Wolves base. Yeah, but now Yamag will be ready to fight. So Elements might just want to back away, reset the whole thing, figure out, okay, do we need to sell any last minute items here? We need potions. We need to prepare for that next dragon, get the buff again for them. Get a few debots here around this red buff of the wolves and then go back, get potions everyone. You have plenty of gold, it's like 2k and most of the guys. Two inhibitors respawn now for the wolves. is sitting on 6,000 gold, he's earned 28,000 gold in this game, which of course is officially the longest game we've had this split in Europe. He's also not died too, he's been really spectacular at just poking it out from the back line and only moving forward when he knows his team is right behind them and they can't focus him out. Uh, the Mercurial Scimitar too, also helping him out massively when he gets in those bad situations. They've got uh, that one, they've got the Mikhail's Crucible also to try to negate the Zed. Let's see if this dragon in 45 seconds spawning yet again elements in position with the Scuttle Crab. See if they can catch some wolves in the trap. And you know, it's a long game when the Lulu support gets a death cap. Then uh, yes. we're getting to a point yes. where there's a lot of gold going around. No luck at from Copenhagen Wolves decide not to get that MR. Because obviously Nidalee, or oh, sorry, Rex, I could have gone for it, didn't go for it. And Unlimited decided to get more AP instead of that 20 magic, re magic resist. Elements continuing to take a leaf out of the Fnatic book, the old Fnatic that is. This time they're revealed by the Sentinel of Freeze. Tense concentration as you see the player cams here. Let's see what happens next. All they need to do now is wait for these super minions to push the top wave. Don't fight yet. Let them push in. Wicked, he needs to be a little bit careful here. Yeah, but so the black the shield's poke. on. Just poke. Wait for these super minions to push in. Copenhagen Wolves then either had to send Yumbuck back to defend. That's not going to happen. So they are going to be forced to engage. And you can see all five. Yumbuck, he might be going in. This oh, this dragon, oh, it's going low. Go. Here we go. Yumbuck gets secured up this time. Copenhagen Wolves, they pick number five. But will the fight go awry? Wicked trying to zone out the members. But they the got Wolves, oh, they took Weckless down. Win. That's a big shutdown. There's minions pushing on the top. Crepo, though, he's going low. Froggen, he's going down. And the Guardian Angel is popped. These death timers, they're so, so long, Deficio. The Wolves won the fight. Got the dragon. Four guys alive. They should be able to push him for the win here. Take the minions in the mid lane. What a game. Oh, what a game. It's not quite 67 minutes on the clock. Soren Unlimited, well, Unlimited's still hurting a little bit, but this inhibitor is going to go down. You've got the Rek'Sai back there to defend. And one it's Nexus Tower. Over half a minute, there's only one Nexus Tower. They can just tank this one up, and they are. This It looks like it's going to be game over here. 67 minutes, and there's super minions spawning on the top, but it doesn't matter. The Nexus is going down, and the Wolves have outlasted again. They take down Elements in 67 minutes. You can see in the element, Elements guys right there. You don't really believe what just happened. You made a fantastic comeback. You had five dragons, you had the Baron. You were pushing down. You couldn't use it. And the Wolves come back and win that last dragon fight 67 minutes into the game. And the <laughs> it was just, that was a game of craziness all across the board. Yes. The Wolves 
it was so dangerous to push in. But they managed it. They managed to take that fight. They managed to get the ace. And then it was just a quick end and a hard-fought game. That was one of the most contested we've seen this split. And Elements, they just see another one slip out of their grasp. And an important one. The Wolves now are pretty far ahead of Elements in terms of the standings. Elements are still sitting outside of that playoff spot. Unicorns of Love needs to be a victory for them if they want to make it in. But really, this game, early game, was so much in favor of, of Copenhagen Wolves. They did so well. They got all the outer turrets. They split pushed. It was beautiful to watch. And then we saw their new and improved decision making from Elements in the mid to late game. They were the ones finding small openings, got four or five towers from it, stayed pretty even in goal despite being behind. And then once we got to the late game, obviously a lot of things happened. There was a Baron from Elements where they got killed by Copenhagen Wolves. All in all, they... Yeah. It's, it was just, it was so close.